Welcome back everyone. Today I'm going to show you how to make an 8 point star. Some of you might recognize this as the star of Bethlehem. Whichever the case, I'm going to teach you how to cut all these angles using only your miter saw. No table saw required and no complicated jigs. Now figuring out the angles to an 8 point star is one thing. Figuring out how to make your miter saw cut those angles, that's a whole different story. But I will teach you exactly how to do that. I'm also going to teach you how to make new wood look like old rustic barn wood. I will encourage you to watch the entire video because I did make a couple of mistakes and I don't want you to make the same mistakes I did. Fortunately, for every mistake, there is a fix. Alright, let's get going. So first things first, let's talk about the wood here. I'm just using a standard 1x4 SPF from your big box store. And yes, I managed to find a straight one. Kind of a rare thing to find these days. Uh, and just for reference, I'll get my tape measure out here. We are at three and a half inches wide. So if you've got a, a spare one by four laying around, you'll, you should be able to make the star. I think we're going to need about 50 inches long. Um, unconfirmed yet, but I, I will try to confirm that for you after we cut all the pieces. Now, the other thing I wanted to do is add some texture to the wood because I want it to kind of look uh, rustic, kind of like this star here, which I made a little while ago. Uh, I basically just took new wood and turned it into something that looks like old barn wood. Uh, and I, it was a pretty easy process, uh, mostly just used my, my angle grinder. Uh, and then some different colored stains and whatnot. Um, if you want to see exactly how I made the star, I'll leave a, a link in the description for that. Uh, but for this uh, Bethlehem star, I want the texture, but not necessarily this color. I think uh, maybe maybe it might be a little bit too dark. Um, but uh, yeah, let's talk about the texture a little bit, and we'll uh, we'll get to the finishing later on. Uh, so basically, I'm just using a brass wire wheel on an angle grinder. And I just grind away at this wood, and it basically just eats away at the grain and leaves a really cool uh, raised grain pattern. So let's go ahead and do that. It shouldn't take too long, and uh, we'll just do the whole board at once. Uh, otherwise, doing individual pieces uh, would, would kind of be uh, a little bit of a pain and probably a little bit dangerous. Very cool. And so that whole board uh, took me about, I think, six or seven minutes. And uh, I think it's well worth it. Now, if you want to bring out even more character, bring out the torch. Now, I've done some torching on regular wood in the past, and it, it looks okay. But I find that the combination of using the wire wheel to bring out that grain and then the torch on top of that really accentuates the grain much more than without using the wire brush. So I think it's a great combination here. So I'll go ahead and torch the rest of this board off camera. I will go finish the rest outside because, uh, well, it gets a little smoky in here. Now if you've charred things before, you probably know that it doesn't usually come out this smooth and uniform. So I did take a couple extra steps off camera, and I'll tell you about that. So basically once I, once I charred it, I uh, sprayed a little bit of water on top with uh, this, this little spray bottle here. And then, this is something I've been messing around with lately, is I sprinkle a little bit of soot from this old charred up log here. Just a little bit on top. And then I use this brass uh, wire brush here, and I just brush it along the grain, and it kind of just blends everything together and makes it look really nice and soft and uh, uniform. All right, let's finally get to cutting those angles, but let's just take a look at what we're dealing with here. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to split this into three different sections here. So we're going to start by cutting these three pieces first then these four, and then we'll do this long one last. But basically, I am going to show you exactly how to set your saw up here, uh, so you don't have to worry about all that, all this translation here. Um, but I'll leave my notes here, uh, you know, in case you guys uh, <laughs> want to try to decipher my chicken scratch here. Yeah, it's a little bit embarrassing, um, but uh, anyways, there it is. Some of my math didn't kind of work out there. I, fi I figured out some kind of formula 
that works for, for uh, translating from angles to what to set the miter saw at. Uh, see if you guys can figure it out. Um, if you're really interested, maybe one day I could I could make a super boring technical video about trigonometry as they relate to stars. Not just this one, but maybe just like a, a five-point star as well. Uh, I'm not an engineer. I'm not a math expert. I'm just a regular guy learning the stuff. Um, so I think that's why I try to like keep things as simple as possible so that people can relate. Um, but yeah, I've learned a few things, so maybe it could be helpful. Let me know in the comments. All right, so let's get going here. So I've got my saw set up here. So the first cut you're going to be making here is right at the end of the board at uh, 54 degrees. Now, if your saw does not go to 54 degrees, I apologize. I don't think there's a way to make this without uh, one of these bigger saws that, that goes beyond the 45. If you do still want to make some stars and you have a saw that only goes to 45 degrees, uh, check out my channel. I've got uh, plenty of five point stars uh, that you can check out. So we'll make that first cut at 54 degrees. I'll go ahead and do that right now. So once you get that first cut done, you're going to measure this angle here, which is, it's six inches long. So I'm actually going to mark this at six and a quarter and I'm going to cut three pieces that are six and a quarter long while keeping the angle the same. And I'll set up a stop block to do that. So after cutting these three pieces, it's time to get to the, the next angle here. Uh, so you're going to set your saw up to 45 degrees. And as you can see, I've uh, done a few things here. Uh, basically, what we're going to be doing here is sticking this piece into here, cutting it at 45, flipping it over, and cutting it again at 45. Uh, and that should give us the angles that we need. Um, I just wanted to talk to you about, a little bit about this stuff here. So this is a... Uh, a scrap piece of wood that I'm using as a, as a zero clearance here. So I've got it set up right next to my blade there. And this obviously is the one by four that we just cut. And I just got this clamped down here and this clamped to the fence. And it acts as a very solid way to hold this piece into place when I, when I make my cut. Now to figure out where to clamp everything, I basically just measure the, the shortest length here, which is usually the one that I cut. This was, we measured this earlier, that was six inches, and then we marked it at six and a quarter. So we know that this one's gonna be longer here, right? Um, so I go with the shortest one, and I basically just make it so the corner is pretty much lined up with the edge of this uh, zero clearance uh, piece here. And when I bring that blade down, it's gonna cut pretty much exactly at that corner. Uh, and then we're gonna flip it over and, uh, and do it again there, so. Oh, actually, there is one more important thing here. Uh, I put three strips of masking tape here, and uh, that's because this like this red piece here is a little bit lower than the aluminum here, uh, and I find that if I don't put that there, uh, my piece will kind of tilt over, and so uh, that prevents that from happening. So we get a better better fitting star in the end. All right, so I'll go ahead and uh, get that cut. So 45 degrees. I'll make one cut flip it over, make the next. So I went ahead and cut the rest of them off camera there, uneventful, went really well, and I uh, just want to make sure everything's looking the way it should, and I, I think it does. I haven't actually made one of these, believe it or not. I've only made this uh, scrap trial star over here, so I'm hoping everything lines up. Looks like it does. Now that we've got these three pieces cut, it's time to move on to these ones here. So I'll go ahead and set up my saw, and uh, we'll get to it. So to cut these pieces, uh, it's very similar to the first three pieces that we did. We're going to go back to 54 degrees and start there. 
and uh, I'm just using the same board as earlier. It's already cut at 54 degrees here. And I'm going to slide it over and I'm going to cut it every four and a quarter inches. And I'm going to get four pieces there. So four and a quarter instead of the six and a quarter earlier. Uh, and if you're wondering why I keep adding that extra quarter, uh, basically I just like to make everything a little bit too long so that I got a little bit more uh, room for error uh, if I make, make a mistake. Um, I think if you wanted to, for those first three pieces, you could probably cut them at six inches long if you wanted to save some wood. And this one you could probably do at four inches. But to keep it on the safe side, I would recommend six and a quarter and four and a quarter. So let me go ahead and cut those pieces and uh, we'll get to the next step. All right, so for this next part, this is, I think, where things start getting interesting. Um, so we got the four pieces cut here, and I'm just going to cut one of them, and I, th I think I'll have an easier time explaining everything and, and give you, giving you guys some good visuals uh, if I do it that way. Um, so again, like earlier, this is 54 degrees. We've got the same uh, uh, zero clearance fence here set up right next to the blade. And basically, we're going to slide this in here, make one cut, and uh, oh yeah, sorry, I did change it to uh, 45 degrees again. So exactly like, like earlier with the first three pieces, uh, except for we're, uh, we're just making it smaller. So, um, so 45 degrees, make one cut, flip it over, make the next cut, and in terms of where to make that cut, I'll explain that after I cut this piece. So this is where we're at so far. I know, it's looking pretty messed up, uh, but I think we got a good enough visual here I can explain myself a little better. Uh, so first we cut them in this shape and then we cut it into this shape here and uh, obviously this slides into, into place quite nicely. Uh, I did make it a little bit too long just to show you show you what I'm dealing with here. So the goal is to match uh, this edge with this edge in terms of uh, making them the same size there. So all I'm doing to figure out where to cut these angles is I'm bringing these together here getting the points together there. And I basically just mark it right at the corner there. And uh, that's how I'll know where to make my next cut. And once I do that, instead of having that overhang there, obviously, it'll be like this, nice and flush. So I'll go ahead and cut the rest of them and then uh, we'll tackle this final piece. And uh, like I said, I haven't made one of these yet, but I'm hoping, judging by my trial thing here, it should fit in there once I get it sorted out. This angle might be a little bit sharper, but uh, anyways, we'll figure it out. You know what? Scratch that thought. Uh, I'm not gonna cut these yet because I've run into a little bit of a problem. Um, Having just spoken about this piece, it kind of got me thinking. Um, I think, I think I may have made these slightly too big, because I don't think this one by four is wide enough. Just by like maybe an eighth of an inch, uh, I don't think it's wide enough for the final piece. So I'm gonna have to recut everything. I know, I know, my bad, my bad. Okay, so let's pretend we're back at the beginning cutting these uh, first three pieces here. So rather than lining this up right at the corner at this stage, I think what I would have done differently is just slide it over a little bit, an extra eighth of an inch over that corner. Uh, and so that's basically what I'm going to do now to recut everything. I'm going to slide everything over and I'm just going to shave an eighth of an inch off every single piece.
Uh, and let me just uh, get my measuring tape here. So we had originally cut those. They were just over five and three quarters. So I think what I'll do is I'll cut them down to uh, five and five eighths. I think that should uh, be good enough there. And just to be uh, super clear, uh, the, the reason we're making this shorter is not to make the whole piece shorter. It's actually to make this facet not as long. And, and that'll allow it to match the, uh, the facet that comes out of cutting that last piece, which I know I haven't gotten to yet, but um, I'm just thinking ahead here and I think this is the right thing to do. So let's go ahead and do that. So there we go, problem solved, I think. We'll find out when we get that final piece in there, but I'm glad I did that, because um, I'm pretty sure I would have had problems with that. And it didn't take too long, just recut those three pieces. I uh, cut these four smaller ones to size, and uh, all these facets are uh, fitting together quite nicely here. So I guess it's finally time to tackle that last piece, and uh, let's hope it all fits together. All right, here's the setup for the final piece. So you're going to set your saw to 22.5 and uh, what I've got here is a makeshift steep angle jig. Uh, I don't have uh, any videos on how to make one of these. Uh, as you can see I just made this out of scrap wood but it's basically just a piece of plywood clamped down at 90 degrees. Uh, and I got one on this side too and this allows me to just slide this in here so that I can hold it in place uh, while making a very sharp, uh, sharp angle cut here. Now there's definitely some better jigs out there for this. Um, I'll let you I'll let you Google that if you want. Uh, I haven't made a video on that yet. Uh, one important thing to note though is that uh, you have a you have something there for your one x four to rest against because when the blade is uh, spinning, it's going to want to pull your piece of wood that way. Um, so do be careful with that. Do this at your own risk, by the way. Use your power tools at your own risk, and. Um, yeah, let's let, let's move on here. I'll I'll make the cut. So we're gonna cut this at uh, twenty two point five degrees. Okay, so like I said, not the best jig here. Uh, you, you probably saw me struggling there. And uh, basically, what was happening as I was getting a little bit of a, a wedge effect, I think, and uh, these two pieces were pinching the blade there. Um, so I had to stop, go back and cut from the back side. But even when that, but even when the blade came down there, I could feel this piece wanting to go this way. And jam the blade. Um, yeah, sorry, I don't have a better setup than this uh, unless I use my table saw. Uh, that is one benefit of using a table saw for angles like this. Um, but yeah, so there's definitely some room for improvement with uh, with cutting this angle. Uh, in fact, I after making this cut, I I don't think I can really recommend this to you. Uh, but if you can find a better system for cutting these sharp angles on a miter saw definitely do that but for now this is what we're dealing with all right so now I'll show you how to make the uh, the next cuts up here so according to my trusty little calculations here uh, I need to set my saw up to 51.75 degrees now as you can imagine getting that right on a miter saw is uh, kind of difficult so what I did was I put it to 52 and then I just backed it off a little bit. So that's probably as close as I'm going to get to 51.75. And uh, yeah, we'll just kind of wing it and see what happens here. Should be pretty close nonetheless. Uh, and then to uh, line this up, again, just like earlier, I'm lining up this corner with this uh, zero clearance fence here. So uh, I'm probably going to actually flip this over. I'll make the first cut this way because there's less wood to cut there. Uh, and then I'll flip it over and cut it again. So let's go ahead and do that and uh, hopefully it fits.
thing. So let's see how this thing fits in here. I can already tell you it's not perfect, but totally fixable. So as I slide it in here, you can see two different problems here. One, this gap up here. And two, it's a little bit too big over here. But this is best case scenario. Uh, because it's because it's too big, we have some room to make it smaller and adjust the, the angles uh, slightly. So it was a really good idea to cut those three pieces a little bit smaller. Now I was kind of anticipating this because when I was working on my trial star, I had originally had it at 52, 52.5 there. Uh, and then, but then I did some math and mathematically it should have been 51.75, but 52.5 fits better. So the reason this happens is because we're dealing with so many facets. Uh, this happens with my five point stars as well, but it's not a big deal. You just got to figure out what works with your, with your setup, with your saws. Uh, there's probably a little bit of play in my, in my jigs cause they're definitely not perfect. And I think that's where my, my error is coming from. Um, so if you have just a very, very minute error, so your, your angles just off by who knows, like 0 0.0 whatever, but that will amplify the more facets you put together. So that's probably why we didn't get exactly 51.75 in the end. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust my saw to something that's just over 52 degrees. So it turns out I did in fact have to go to 52.5 again. So I guess I should have uh, trusted my trusty little trial template here. Um, so 52.5 I guess is what I'm going to recommend. Uh, but you might want to start 51.75 and, and work your way up. I'm not sure what your setup is and um, maybe your inaccuracies might be different than my inaccuracies. Uh, the only thing we need to do now though is get rid of this tiny little overhang there. So that just means that this piece is too big. Uh, so the saw is set up already at 52.5 so we're going to use those same angles and I'm just going to shave another layer off each side. Uh, probably probably half the thickness of the blade. So after a couple of cuts we got this size down just right. Very nice. So I guess all that's left to do now is tackle the finishing touches. Now obviously I'm going to have to torch this little section here. I apparently didn't torch enough of the uh, 1x4 that I was using. So I'll go ahead and do that and we will tackle the assembly. So for the assembly, uh, basically just start by laying a piece of parchment paper down on a flat surface and I glue all the facets together with some wood glue. Uh, now don't get too carried away with the wood glue, you don't want a bunch squeezing out the top. Uh, your goal is actually to get the glue to squeeze out the bottom and onto the parchment paper. And so when the glue uh, gets onto the parchment paper, it actually creates a little bit of suction and helps to hold the pieces together. So I'm not using any clamps or anything. So I'll just work my way around here, glue every single facet. And the great thing about wood glue is you've got lots of time to uh, slide these pieces around. Once that glue is dried, we can reinforce the star so that it's nice and strong. Uh, so basically I use this uh, little jig that I made. It's kind of like a pocket hole jig, uh, but basically it's just, a, it's just a dowel jig to drill a hole on a steep angle. Uh, and then I'm able to fill the hole with glue and insert a dowel in there. Uh, in this case, bamboo barbecue skewers. I know, these things actually come in pretty handy. So I just insert those and then uh, cut them flush with my pull saw, sand it down, and you end up getting a really nice, tidy uh, finish on the back here. And that is how you make an eight point star. I know, that was a really long video. If you guys watched till the end, thank you for watching. Uh, man, that this, this video was no joke. I um, think I learned a lot though, making this thing. And uh, I hope I taught you a few things. It's not perfect though. Uh, I don't know if you guys can see, there's a, where was it? Oh, right, yeah, this one over here. This gap is a little bit bigger than I wanted. Uh, that was actually a complication with the, uh, the glue up. I think, I think it must have moved a little bit when it dried. Um, I really like the way the barn wood looks. I, I ended up adding these, uh, these bevels into these, uh, these edges here uh, when I did some sanding before I glued it. 
And um, it looks great, but one problem with that is if there is a little bit of a gap, I can't fill it with putty. Uh, so I think I'm going to have to rethink that whole process. Uh, I didn't really consider that. Also, in the center, when I sanded those bevels in, I kind of sanded the corners. And you can see um, all that sanding on each piece kind of kind of left a little bit of a star-shaped gap in the middle there. Uh, that doesn't happen when I don't put bevels in. Uh, so yeah, a little bit, little bit frustrating there, but uh, overall, like it still looks really good. Even if I didn't put the bevels in, I think I would still have problems with putty because there's there's so much raised grain here uh, that I think the putty would just get all caught up in the grain and it would look really messed up. So I'm I'm gonna have to rethink this uh, this barnwood idea. It does look cool, but it does present. Uh, some problems when uh, when gluing and if I wanted to use some putty so anyways just another problem I gotta solve but uh, that's okay we'll figure it out um, right and I think we should size this thing up I haven't measured this yet we are at 21 inches tall and 18 wide so that's actually pretty big considering all we used was a, uh, a 1x4 that's not bad so I think that's it for now, guys. Uh, if you liked the video, hit that like button, subscribe, and uh, stay tuned for more videos. Uh, now that I've figured out all these angles, I'm thinking maybe it might be cool to make a compass star. Stay tuned for that. Probably not till the new year, though. So anyhow, that's it for now, guys. Thanks for watching, and uh, see you next time.